So, compressing a snare drum to even out the level. The snare drum playing of even the best drummer will vary in level. Compression can help make the level more even throughout the song. Yes, compression can be your friend if the snare drum varies in level. If the drummer's really whacking it to its, maximum, to its maximum extent, it's probably pretty much the same level. But if it's playing with more subtlety and variation, it might be varying, and it might sound really nice, but it might make the song really hard to mix because you can't get the snare drum at just the right level that you want. So there's two ways you can deal with this. One is to use automation, and automation is a good method. But today I'm going to look at compression. How can we compress the snare drum to even out that variation in level without it changing the, the tone of the snare drum too much? So we're keeping it pretty much as it was and only just changing it in level. So here we go. Look at this lovely snare drum here that I've uh, found a photograph of. It's a Rash brand and I think you should look that up if you're interested in drums. And just by the look of it, I think it's going to cost you a lot of money. But hey. <laughs> so. The snare drum playing of even the best drummer will vary in level, I've said that. Compressions can help make the level more even throughout the song. So I've got a snare drum that varies in level, and it's something I have concocted with a, a virtual instrument. I think it was the uh, Stephen Slate uh, drums instrument, uh, probably the latest version 5.5 even. So it's, it's not quite realistic, but it's realistic enough uh, for this uh, the purpose of this demonstration. And I've made it vary in level simply through playing it on a MIDI keyboard and varying it in level. It wasn't really rocket science to do that. So what I will say though is this is just one snare drum, it's one compressor that I'm using, and it's my take on what it should sound like. So there's a whole infinite range of how this could possibly sound. So when you're doing it, make it sound good to you. This is what sounds good to me. So firstly I'm going to play the video of the snare drum just as it is, and I'll just dip into full screen while I play it. Here we go. Okay, that was exciting, wasn't it? Good. <laughs> In a full song arrangement, as I said, it is going to make the snare more difficult to mix because some hits will be too too loud and some will be too quiet. So as I said here, just on the screen, you can see it just here. It can be done using automation, and that's a good way to do it, but this is going to be compress compression. So before I started this whole thing, I decided on settings which I feel work well with this snare drum. So clearly, the settings will differ according to the requirements of your project. So what the snare drum sounds like, what the compressor sounds like, and what your song is supposed to sound like. So it's just for this one example. So here are the settings. I'm using the standard Pro Tools compressor because it's a very simple compressor, and it's got all the settings that you want. So some compressors, particularly the vintage emulations, uh, they don't have all the controls. <laughs> and, you know, I just like to have all the controls that I want. So the knee, firstly, I've set this to its hardest value. So a hard knee is like it's like uh, no compression, no compression, compression, that kind of thing. Whereas a soft knee is compression, uh, sorry, no compression, bit more, bit more, bit more, bit more, bit more, try not to hit the microphone, full compression. So I'm setting it as hard as it can be so that the signal is either at a low level, it's not compressed, and at a high level, it is compressed. It's either one thing or the other. A soft knee would kind of blend one into the other. But for an attacking sound like a snare drum, I do feel like a hard knee is probably the most useful way to set it. But, you, you know, you set it the way that you want. The, the ratio I've set to 12 to 1, which is uh, a fairly high ratio. So it's on the high side of normal, but I thought this was the right amount of compression. It stands to reason that the higher the ratio, the more compression you're going to get. So if the snare drum lead needs a lot of evening out, then you're going to need a high ratio. If it just needs a bit of evening out, then a low ratio will be fine. I think three to one is probably about the least uh, you're going to use, but you know, judge it yourself. So 12 to one, really going for it. The attack here, 20 microseconds, so not milliseconds, microseconds. So this is a really fast attack and the compressor, this compressor will go down to 10 microseconds. Quite often when you're using the compressor and you're thinking, where should I set the attack? 
what you're going to do is you're going to make it shorter and shorter and shorter and shorter. And then suddenly it'll get to a point where it says, ah, that sounds bad, particularly on percussive sounds. It's where the, the compressor is biting into the first cycle of the waveform. And particularly with a low frequency sound, uh, that can become really obvious. So you, you're shortening and shortening and shortening the attack till it sounds bad. Then you back it off and you're probably in the right zone at that point. Maybe a little bit more fine tuning, but you're probably OK. So I felt that with, with this snare drum and this compressor, a 20 microsecond attack, it didn't seem to affect the initial strike of the drum much, in fact, hardly at all. So that's the value that I chose for that. The release, uh, actually, that's just the standard release when you open up this plugin. And that's quite a quick release, and it will just follow the, the snare drum as it decays away. So that's not such a critical point there. Although I could cover that in a different video because I'm not saying that release is not important. It is important, but that would be a whole that would be a whole another thing to cover. Um, gain normally with compression, well, always with compression, a standard compressor brings down the level. That's the whole point of the whole purpose of the action of the compressor that it should bring down the high levels, leave the low levels where they are, bring down the high levels. And that's that's going to make things quieter. So in general, what you'd want to do is to bring the whole thing back up again so that subjectively it's about the same that it was before. And that's the purpose of this gain control here, which is sometimes called the makeup gain. The reason why you'd use it is because normally when you're compressing is you've got to ask yourself the question, am I making things better? And the first rule of audio is don't make things worse. <laughs> it's so easy to do, even even with a bit of experience behind you. And if you compare things at the same subjective level, it's easier to tell whether you're making improvement or not. But this time I thought, well, let's just, just, just do the one thing and just leave the game where it is. And it's not going to make that very much difference. And the other thing is that when you've done this, when you have evened out the level of the snare drum, you are going to want to reconsider the fader level and put it back into the context of the whole drum set and or a drum kit, as we call it in England, and um, the whole mix, the context of the whole mix. So whenever you compress, you are going to want to re reconsider the level anyway. So if this were a whole mix, you would have to adjust the fader. But in this case, I've left the gain on zero. Now, this threshold, this is going to be the important thing. This is going to be the thing that gets things right for you or doesn't quite get things quite as right as you want them. So I'm just going to play the uncompressed snare drum again because you've probably forgotten by now what it sounded like. Here we go. OK, not much to go wrong there. If you were looking at this meter, what you oops, started again. <laughs> if you're looking at this meter just uh, next to my mouse here. Oh, no, oh no my camera's going to run out of uh, something or other. It's going to run out of battery. OK, I'll just wait till it runs out and then I'll just start it up again and reframe the shot. You'll hardly even notice. Uh, so, yes, I was saying that um, that level is is going up and down. And I could play it once more, but you know, you can just skip back if you want to just see that. So setting the threshold. <laughs> so this is on my uh, my website. Um, I've got uh, Google is uh, serving ads on the website, which, you know, helps pay some of the costs because, you know, it doesn't I ran out of space on my memory card. Do you notice how cleverly I managed to reframe the picture so nobody noticed, noticed there was any discontinuity there? <laughs> what I was saying was that um, I have ads on this site. It's got to pay the costs back somehow because, you know, it's not free to have a website. You realize that it costs money to have a website, all the hosting and database and stuff and what have you. So I've got ads placed by Google, and this is how clever Google is. So Google knows everything about everything and everybody. And on my page about an audio compressor, it's put an ad for air compressors. So that is how clever, clever Google is in the 20th year of the 21st century. Come on. <laughs> OK, so how are we going to set this threshold level? This is the serious bit. This is the most important bit. <coughs> Excuse me. Excuse me. We need to set the threshold level so that the quietest drum hit is not compressed. 
It might not be the actual quietest. It could be the second quietest or the third quietest, but let's say the quietest. And that means that all the drum hits that are louder than that will be brought down in level closer to the quiet, quietest. Not exactly down, because that would take out all the dynamics altogether. And we probably don't want to do that, but we're bringing them down. And, and that is pretty much a rule of thumb with compression anyway for any type of compression, unless it's for a special effect. If you're compressing to reduce the dynamic range, then the quietest sounds that are of use to you should not be compressed. And it's only the sounds that are louder than that that are compressed, and that's how normally you set the threshold level. So, in, in this uh, compressor, uh, we'll see two indicators in the gain reduction meter. Where has it gone? So, here's the gain reduction meter labeled uh, GR, very helpfully, and it's going to show us by how much the compressor is reducing the level. I'd have liked it to be called a level reduction meter, to be honest, but hey, that's just me. So it's calibrated downwards. Ooh, I didn't mean to do that. Uh, I'll just click here just to draw your attention. And um, I'll click here to draw your attention. I can do that. The further, there's going to be a yellow bar, and the further it comes, do comes down, the more compression we're getting. And that's from moment to moment. One of the things about this compressor, however, is that yellow bar, it's sometimes a bit, it's either sluggish or it's so fast that you can't even see it. But there's like a peak indicator as well, and that's uh, there's a horizontal yellow bar just goes just goes across like that. It's very thin, it's, it's just about a pixel wide. So it's sometimes a little bit difficult to spot. So that's why I'm pointing it out, because I want you to look for it in the video. And that will give us a much more accurate representation of the amount of compression that we're getting. So if I go down to the uh, next video, we don't need to hear the snare drum again. So what's going to happen here is I've set a threshold of minus 12 dB. And what you'll find is, you're looking at this gain reduction meter here, you'll find that the quietest hit is compressed, and that's not what I want. But if I set the gain reduction just here to minus 11 dB, just a small change, it's not compressed, at least not according to the meter, and that's close enough. So I'll just watch the video through, and I'll just put it in full screen. Okay, so what we can see from that, you might need to uh, skip back and watch it again if you didn't quite get it. What we can see from that is that the threshold level is important. I mean, if it had been minus 12, it, it would have made such a small difference that nobody would have noticed. But what it's saying is that minus 11, minus 12, great. Minus 20, not so great. Minus 6, not so great. Uh, they're way out of the zone that we want. Minus 11, minus 12 is the zone that we want. So any lower threshold level and it would compress the quietest hit, which we don't want. And any higher, it wouldn't compress all of the hits that are louder than the quietest hit. So now that I've found the right settings, we can hear what the snare drum sounds like with the compression. Here we go. Okay, so you can hear there's still some dynamics in the drum, uh, because we probably don't want to take out all the dynamics completely, but it's much more controlled than it was originally. And I'll play the original, oh sorry, I'll play the play, uh, I'll play it with the plugin deactivated. What I'll do is I'll play this one and I'll play this one immediately after, so you can really hear the difference.
So did you hear it? Did you hear the difference? Quite often, these effects are really quite subtle and you've got to tune in your ears to be able to really appreciate what the difference is. And it might sound like a small difference, but uh, it's not just me that says this, but a lot of small differences can add up to a really significant difference over the course of an entire mix. So getting these small details, and Lisa said right there, get the small details right. What I meant was, what I meant to say was, get the small details the way that you want them. That's, that's, that's more important than getting it right, I think. But if you didn't hear that, I've got a way of demonstrating this which will make it very much more clear. This demonstration isn't something that you would ever do in real life, or if you did, I don't know what you're trying to achieve, <laughs> but it does make things a bit more clear. I'd like to say crystal clear, but it's like a cloudy kind of crystal with a few <laughs> flaws and inclu inclusions, perhaps. It's making it more clear than it, than it was. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to place the compressed version, so the compressed version with the reduced dynamic range, I'm going to place it in the left channel. I'm thinking that's your left. This is my left hand, I know that, <laughs> so I hope I get this right. And the um, uncompressed copy, the original, I'm going to place that in the right channel. Now, I've got those mixed up. I'm not doing it again. You just have to figure it out yourself. The left channel is going to be the compressed version, and the right channel is going to be the uncompressed version, which varies in level. So as I play this, in your left ear, this is my left ear, uh, you will hear the compressed version, and it's pretty much the same in level. In your right ear, you'll hear the uncompressed version, and it's, it changes in level. And what you'll hear is the stereo image will keep on swinging to the right every time that rises in level. So you've really got to listen carefully to this, but it is an interesting demonstration. So here we go. And that's it. That really is it. If you didn't quite get it, firstly, make sure you're listening on headphones and skip back and have a listen again. So in conclusion, compression is a very useful tool for evening out an uneven snare drum. Automation is good too, but this is compression today. Um, and following that, following the compression, you need to set the fader level so that it suits the whole drum set and it suits the context of the full mix. So that's it. Compressing the snare drum to even out the level. I'm David Meller, course director of Audio Masterclass. Thank you for listening. I think that's it. I think that's it. <laughs>